Hello and welcome to Sales Gambit. I'm your host Ashish, CEO of Convain, a conversation intelligence platform for the sales team. In today's episode of Sales Gambit, we have Julie Hansen, founder of Performance Sales and Training, virtual keynote speaker, author of 3 sales books, and a sales leader and director for multiple competitive companies over the last 20 years. And to add that to the list of achievements, Julie is also an actor. She performed in over 75 plays, commercials and television shows. including hbo sex and the city welcome to the sales gambit julie i'm super excited to host you today oh thank you ashish i'm super excited to be here yeah definitely so in today's episode we want to be talking about you know what you already know best how to leverage video to improve sales in 2022 right i mean that's that's the core topic that we are going to cover right But before we get started there i would briefly uh love to understand from you on how did you get into sales your sales journey what you might be working on today yeah absolutely um you know the the way i got into sales was kind of through the back door i was a buyer so okay. i had sales people calling on me which was which was great except that was the only part of the day i liked because <laughs> the rest was <laughs> crunching numbers and i thought yeah you know what i want to do what they do and so that that was my path now the the catch was i didn't realize that when you're a buyer everybody calls you back and yeah. when you're in sales almost nobody calls you back right so it was quite a shock to my system and um that's actually when i first started getting into acting because i thought oh my gosh because it really did a number on my confidence and i thought how can i you know what can i do to kind of throw myself into the fire and face rejection and get in front of people and so i started acting and and that became another career path and i've always used that in sales because that really helped me uh surprisingly find my authentic place in sales and find my voice and and um work through that uh rejection and everything that comes with being in sales and and dealing with other people's you know agendas so so if this I, i'm getting this right you first uh were in sales then you started acting just to get confidence yes yes and i loved it so i did for a long time i had parallel paths where i did you know i i sold and then i did you know plays at night or on the weekends or commercials and you know um short term uh, short term projects so yeah and i i eventually moved to i i live in denver colorado and i eventually moved to new york and just did acting for about um 2 years and um and that was that was fun but i also realized that path wasn't wasn't for me it's uh, i i i liked the uh i liked all the benefits that came with having a business and being in sales and being a starving artist was was not on my <laughs> on my plan yeah sure, sure so you have created this amazing masterclass on how to sell with videos right and uh, i mean what really moved you or motivated you to take this action was the same thing facing rejection and the motivation that you were trying to gain with acting was that uh, one of the basis for that to start this master class and like can you give us some overview here that'd be great yes certainly uh well it really came about when the pandemic struck because i've been uh training sales people on presentation skills executive presence demo skills and most of it was talking to them about how to do it in person because that's how we all met. Mm -hmm. And so when I when the pandemic struck and I saw everybody get in front of a camera and not sure where to look, what to do, feeling awkward, I thought, "Wow, as an actor, I learned all those skills and mm -hmm. I can help people understand how to navigate this new medium because I'll tell you, you know, as an actor, I started out in theater, live theater, which is very much like face-to-face -face sales, right? You have an audience you can see their feedback you have interaction and energy and then when i first transitioned you know i first had an audition to go do something on a a little little film and i went into the audition and i just did the same thing i did live and they were like you know cut <laughs> thanks but no thanks um because i didn't know what to do i didn't know where to look i didn't know the the adaptations that we need to make for this new medium. And so I did what most actors do, which was take on camera 
training to be able to be the best version of myself in this very artificial environment. So I took all those lessons and I put them together in the master class to help people understand that it's not just turning your camera on and having the technology, it's a whole skill set and there's a whole industry that has been practicing this and perfecting it for decades. So why not use that to help us connect better through the camera? That's extremely interesting. I have a very adjacent question here, right? Yeah. And we wrote an ebook on the same topic as well, which is, you know, using video for uh, uh, sales, right, in 2022. Uh, when we performed the quick survey, we figured out that 71% people really are uh, looking at using more videos in their whole sales journey, right? I mean, I'm talking about the sales people themselves, but then the remaining 29%, they are not doing anything about it. It's same as before, right? What do you suggest would be the reason for them to not do anything and use videos? Is it like they're scared about a video or is it really overwhelming for them to create or use videos in during the sales processes? Well, uh, you know, I'm sure there's, that's probably a big chunk of that. And I think there's people that are just always going to be laggards. They're resistant to change. I've done it this way forever. Why do I have to learn these new skills? Mm-hmm. And, and I get some of that, but you know, that's sort of going against, <laughs> against the grain and, and you know, the tide, the tide is changing and we need to adapt to that if we want to be successful. So you can hang on to your old ways but people are going to get, you know, in front of you and they're going to get some of that business that you used to get the way you used to get it. Understood. And so you're saying that they might be scared and they might be, it might be overwhelming for them, but then they will eventually catch up. Do you see? Uh, I, mean, I don't know about that. I, you know, some people may just hold out until they retire. I, you know, that's, that's sure. not unheard of. But do you see this as a, trade of a successful salesperson, like who can adapt to this new medium and new way of selling. Oh, definitely absolutely. A trait. absolutely. I mean, that's a, you know, that's a trait, whether it's adapting to a new medium, adapting to a new manager, adapting to a new client, it's sales is all about adapting, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you have a plan and, and the customer throws you another plan. So you have to be on your toes and not get really stuck on one way of doing things. So Yes. And I think uh, of the people that are on video, there are also a big chunk of people that are just doing what they did in person on video. And so they're not getting the results they want because like me in that audition, they're not connecting with their audience. They're doing things that, that damage their credibility and making it harder for people to want to work with them. So that's, you know, that's a, that's an issue too. They may have turned on the camera. It's like, okay, I'll be on video, but you know, I know, you know, I know how to talk to a camera. I, how hard can it be? It's yeah. like, well, there's, there's an art to it. And there's some, you know, we have a lack of awareness of how we come across on other people's screens and what the camera does to sort of distort some of our behavior. So it's really important that we understand that if we're going to invest the time and the, the energy in doing video, Mm-hmm. Is it possible for you to give us some, let's say, uh, real life examples from your own experience where you have seen or trained someone or worked with someone where uh, they switch to uh, the online medium from the offline one, their uh, sales or their results dropped, right? And then, you know, you help them to get back to the track. And what were the things that you really worked with them on? It'd be great for the audiences to have this real example. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, I'll tell you, I, I mostly work with people by the time they've gotten on video, right? They're they're but they don't well, or they're trying to get on video. I'm not, I'm not usually the one to convince them, right? It's like, they know, but they're scared and they're not using it enough or it takes them three hours to, to -hmm. create one video and, uh, or they're doing videos and they're not getting the results they want. So, uh, there was one gentleman who um, actually worked for a company and they record their videos with a, you know, a a certain platform that does that and review them. And um, he said, you know, I have this one salesman and he he was doing great in person, really getting a lot of those second calls. He was more Mm -hmm. of a a BDR. 
and yeah. um, he's just not converting on video. And I don't, I don't know, I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. And so I reviewed some of his videos, and mm -hmm. you know, it was really clear to me what was happening is very personable guy, and you know, when you're face to face, and yeah. then on video, just very wooden wasn't you know was looking down the entire time so there was no connection and voice very flat and energy low um just very hard to connect with or feel confident that this person knew what he was talking about and so when i worked with them on really how to you know how to look at the camera how to see that other person there even though they're on your screen and you so badly want to look at their face on the screen uh, what a difference that made. I mean, he, he just, you know, getting his energy up, understanding how to bring more energy on video because the camera takes away a lot of your natural energy anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, so he used all those started, you know, approaching every call, every video call with that. And he very quickly got back to, you know, the numbers he was at when he was doing face-to-face -face sales and exceeded that. So um, it really is a remarkable difference to make some of these, what seem like small adjustments that are actually very counterintuitive to do, but really extremely important. Understood, understood. When we talk about video sales, right? Uh, it's, it's a very umbrella term, I would say, right? Um, you know, you can use videos at different places in the sales cycle or the sales journey. One of the places is like showing yourself up on the camera that we are already talking about, right? But then a lot of it can be into prospecting, a lot of it can be uh, probably making sure that you are sending the right content to the users to look at, right? When you're not talking to them and you're keeping them engaged during the sales cycle, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so how do you suggest overall like sales professionals and buyers are benefiting from video as a mechanism or as a, a medium of exchanging information, uh, you know, in the whole sales cycle? Can you give us some examples or thoughts on that? Sure. You know, there's there's tons of advantages, uh, just the ability to uh, watch something or record something at your own schedule and get it get in front of people. Uh, there's a greater likelihood as a salesperson that your videos going, your email is going to get watched if it has a video in it. Mm -hmm. And so that can improve your open rates. Um, but I think the ability, the, the, the benefit is to really have this additional tool to support the rest of your efforts and bring a face to, uh, a face to the conversation. I mean, that is why we're on video right? Mm -hmm. Is to add context and meaning to what our product says. I mean, if it was enough for a customer to read a white paper or read your website, then they would do it. But yeah. obviously it's not. So your job is not to just get in front of them and give them the information. It's to bring, bring that to life. And so if you're not mm -hmm. using video for that, whether you're prospecting or following up or doing a demo, uh, then that's a misuse of video. Understood, understood, understood. And, you know, not everyone is able to use that to the full capacity also, right? Even if you know that, okay, selling with video really helps. What do you think really stops people to, let's say, turn on their camera, exchanging video notes whenever, you know, you're not talking to them. And let's say even if I have to send an email, right? Rather than I answering their question just on an email, I could record a very quick video explaining myself and putting right. myself out there and, you know, creating more trust. What do you think really stops people doing that? Are people really not clear about the advantages or it's just too hazy at the moment to put in everything on video? It's uh, it's just a new behavior, right? And okay. and we're very used to writing a quick email, a text, we've got that down. And so video, especially at first, takes a little more time because you mm -hmm. have to develop the, the habits and you have to get yeah. everything in place. There's a little more preparation involved, certainly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And people are also very critical of, how, you know, there's that, that uh, personal piece. It's a very vulnerable thing to see yourself on video. So mm -hmm. most people, when they see themselves, they record something, they're like, oh, I look terrible, right? They're just <laughs> very harsh judges. And mm -hmm. uh, they get very caught up on some of these superficial 
things that that really don't matter. The question is, are you are, are you delivering a compelling message that that is going to support your your goals and is something yeah. that your customer is going to watch? Mm -hmm. And these little nuances that we don't like about ourselves are not you know, no, nobody really notices those. It's, we, we want to show up, we want to be able to connect when we want to, you know, use great video behaviors, which make people feel like we we're trustworthy and they want to connect with us, which is looking at the camera and which is having good energy and, and not doing things that are very distracting. Mm -hmm. And, uh, those are the behaviors that that have to become muscle memory, just like writing an email is muscle memory. Yeah, yeah. And so a lot of people haven't taken the time to develop those. So when they go to create a video, sure, it takes forever. They got to get all their stuff together and then they get, you know, it's like, okay, now how do I look at the camera? So, oh no, I don't look like, and you know, that's a really inefficient use of time. So spending yeah. the time, and that's why the, the masterclass is, is helpful in that regard, because it walks you through how to make eye contact, how to use body language, how to, um, how to, you know, get your energy up and what that looks like and how to read other people's body language if you're looking at the camera. And so, and gives you a chance to practice those things because what most people are doing is they're practicing on their customers right now. Yeah. And that's a very expensive way to practice. Makes sense. Makes sense. Very quickly, we'll jump to, uh, you know, use of videos. Uh, you know, it can be live video selling with camera on or any other kind of video content in general, uh, you know, that, that a seller can create in different stages of sales cycle. Mm -hmm. And I would love to have your thoughts on each of these stages. So I'll start with lead generation. How do you think the video would impact the lead generation sales cycle if used properly? Uh, yes, that's the key if used properly. Uh, I think it's very effective in lead generation. There's there's statistics that show that, you know, like I said, if it, you know if it's in a, a prospecting email, it tends to get opened more than just a, a you know text email. So absolutely, I think I think it's one of the ways to make a bigger impact too, because humans are really drawn to other human faces. So just seeing that there's a there's a video there and there's a human to it, it humanizes you, which in prospecting is really that's really a tough thing to do. You're just another person sending out information and these customers get so many of them. And but they see a person there, it's like suddenly you're not just a company. Uh you're not just a salesperson, you're you know, Ashish or Julie. Um, and so, yes, you want to, you want to humanize yourself in prospecting and then certainly make sure the, the very critical thing with, with lead generating videos is we need to make sure that we're compelling right from the get go, because people are going to look at your video and they're going to determine right then and there if they want to watch it. And so if you're looking down, if you have a very, you know, there's nothing going on with your face and yeah you don't, you don't quickly get to that place where you're engaging and telling them something of value they're not going to watch it are they going to cut out early fair point fair point fair point and then if uh, i mean you know it's all also about you know putting a face to that name right who have been reaching out yeah. to them cold all this while. right right Absolutely. yeah yeah got it and in, in case, let's say we move to the sales demo stage, right? After the generation lead has been generated and there's a demo going on, uh, you know, how do you differentiate with, uh, between setting with live camera? I mean, the camera on versus camera off. What do you suggest? Yes, well, I I like to have the camera on uh, for the most part. I mean, it's, it's you know, it's small, right? You, you've got your mm -hmm. software on the screen or your slides. Yeah. And here's the thing, like I, I said earlier, what people are going to look to you to bring that content to meaning, to, mm -hmm. to life for them and give it meaning. So they're yeah. going to look at the screen and if, you know, you certainly want to be very clear and direct them, direct their eyes by over on the top left, you'll see this over on the right. Mm -hmm. And then if you are summarizing, uh, you want to say that to the camera. If you, if the customer has a question, you want to be able to, you know, they're going to look at your face right? Mm -hmm. They're going to look to you to provide context. So if it's not too disruptive, I would say go, go full camera, uh, 
you know, especially at the end of showing them something to answer questions, to summarize, to really keep that connection uh, alive and, and not just be, you know, a, a dashboard. Right. True. And it also makes sense for them because you have to build trust, right? I mean, you have just met them and, you know, asking them for money, right? It's eventually the money that you're going to ask them and their time as well. Right. So if you're asking those two important things, it's better you create trust with showing your face up, right? Let's say this is what yeah, you're doing. Yeah, that's a big money. part of trust. And big part of, you know, trust is eye contact. That's how we, yeah, we are more likely to believe people that look us directly in the eye. And so we want to subtly imbue these qualities in our customer's brain and, and not do things that make us look suspicious when we're not, <laughs> we're, we're absolutely <laughs> trustworthy, so, but we're doing things that make us look like we're, we're not, that's a problem. Makes sense. Makes sense. And how do you think about using videos, uh, during post call? A post demo call nurturing right because there's a long cycle of nurturing that happens after the demo calls ends right when i say demo calls about the main call that happens right? Uh, right what happens after that how do you suggest usage of videos there i think that's a great underused way to use video mm -hmm. is to you know follow up you know that's an area that that salespeople have long struggled with the the follow-up and because it's there's limited ways. There's been limited ways to do that. Well, this is another tool in your kit. Mm -hmm. And again, a video is something new. It's something more compelling. They just saw you, they know you, uh, they're more likely to watch it. And it's a great way to stay in front of them. And, and certainly interspersing that with emails or texts or however you communicate. LinkedIn is a, is a great, it's a great addition to keep that connection alive with your customer because that's where sales often fail is in that lack of follow-up and um, not staying top of mind so that's a great way to do that yeah true true makes sense i have one specific way that i want to look at uh, this entire discussion right we have been talking about this whole thing from a seller's perspective on how video is important how let's say turning on the camera is important and all of that can we talk about the buyer's perspective as well, right? How do they feel when you, when they see you there in the front of the camera or uh, they get a video message from you? What goes on in their side of, uh, I mean, I'm in their mind. If you can yeah, help that's us. A, that's a really interesting question. Well, you know, I can't speak for all buyers, but <laughs> certainly they have to, it's based on their experience with video, right? It's like, if they've gotten a bunch of videos that are not worth watching, they go into it with that perception. And I would, I would have to say there are a lot of videos that are not worth watching or that are very, uh, impersonal or very, uh, awkward. And you have, you, you have something to prove, right? You have to, that's why you have to prove right away that you're, you're talking to them because a lot of these videos that are sent out are very impersonal. So if I feel just for an instant that this is a video that you're sending to a hundred people and it's not about me, then I'm probably not going to watch it. Mm -hmm. I have to believe that that's a pretty common experience because customers are aware of all these lead gen programs and salespeople are trying to send out as much things as possible to as many people as possible. And if you feel like you're part of that, you know, you, you're caught in that group, you're going to mm -hmm. be resistant to, to those messages. So mm -hmm. not, not to say that you have to personalize and, and you know, you, you certainly want to tailor the content as much as possible, but I understand the need for efficiency in sales. Mm -hmm. Um, so even if you can't say the person's name or whatever, um, you, when you're on video, you have to be able to you know, the person has to feel like you're talking to them. Yeah. And that only happens if in your mind, you see that customer and you are talking to them. So that brings out your authenticity, your natural personality and cadence. Uh, otherwise this wouldn't like, hi, I'm from XYZ company and we have this new product and mm -hmm. it's great. And you're, you know, I wanted to see if we could get some time on your calendar. 
-hmm. it's very off-putting. It's like we instantly know you're reading, you, it's a script, you're sending this to 100 people as opposed to, hi. So I am from XYZ Company and I really wanted to talk to you because uh, we have this product and I think mm -hmm. that, you know, it's conversational. It's like we're sitting across from each other mm -hmm. and that takes practice. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you're going to invest the time in video, you owe it to yourself to invest time in how do I do this? Uh, how do I show up in a way that's authentic and compelling and really um, maximize the, the potential of video? Because to put out a bunch of videos like, you know, that are very impersonal and generic in delivery is, mm -hmm. is a giant waste of time. Got it makes sense having said all of this uh julie the video selling can still be very difficult right uh, for people so if you have to share like a couple of quick tips with us uh let's say about top three things that you think people should be doing while they are selling live on with video what would you suggest then sure um so i think the the first thing is make eye contact like look at the okay. camera learn how to do that get your camera in a position that is uh, you can memorize where it is. So you're not searching around for it and learn the technique to look at the camera and, and get, you know, when to look at the camera, when it's okay to look away. Um, because that's going to, that's the eyes of your customer. And so if, mm -hmm. it, you know, if you're not connecting with them, they're, they're not through the camera, you're not connecting. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing I would say is make sure that you, have, uh, you know, you, you've got your energy up because like I said, the camera takes away a lot of that energy. So, uh, and that means a couple of things. Most people, when they hear, um, uh, you know, being off, you know, I want to be authentic on camera or just be yourself. They get very relaxed. Right. And they're, you know, they'll sit back and their body language gets, you know, very leisurely and their energy goes down and it's, it's not compelling. It does not read well on camera. Mm -hmm. So, Get your energy up before your call. Actors don't wait until the curtain goes up or the on, you know, the red camera light goes on to be yeah. fully in character, right? And in, in yeah. role. So you can't expect to, you know, to get there from zero to hundred. You have to be on in that instant, especially mm -hmm. if you're sending out uh, videos. Right. Um, so right. Yeah. Yes. And what? yeah, please go ahead. Please go ahead. I yeah. Think and and the other thing is, uh, as I mentioned, that we're, we're on camera for a reason. I would mm -hmm. say, uh, you know, let people know how you feel about what you're saying. That's how we connect. That's why we have our camera on. Yeah. And if you're, if your face has nothing to say, why are you on video? Mm -hmm. I see so many people with this blank face and it's, you know, they're telling me, well, it's going to save you a thousand dollars a month. And it's like, if I, if I just looked at their face, I wouldn't know if it was good news or bad news. Yeah. Right. It's like, you know, use, you know, you don't want to overact, but you want to be sure that you're in touch with how you feel so you can communicate that and express that because sales is a transfer of energy and emotion. And, uh, and we need to, we need to pack that all into this small area that we are able to connect with our customer through and make sure that that transmits. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Uh, I also have one specific question that I wanted to ask about, you know, uh, setting live on these video calls with camera on. Uh, what about how, how do you think uh, these shorter calls impact the overall uh, scenario, right? I mean, have you seen longer calls being uh, difficult in general to navigate through as compared to the shorter calls? And then do you suggest salespeople scheduling shorter calls whenever they are going for video calls or they mm -hmm. want to do a video call? Oh, that's, yeah, that's an interesting question. Uh, I think people have a certain amount of attention and you have to work within that. So it depends what you mean by longer calls. I certainly wouldn't do a call longer than 50 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, that's sort of built into our body. Like we expect something yeah. to change. We get a little antsy and people have meetings back to back. Yeah. So, yeah. um, but there are times, for instance, when you have to demo or something that it takes longer uh, to, to do that. So we have the luxury of breaking things up. I would say, you know, even if you have a longer meeting, like a 50 minute meeting, you want to break it into chunks mm -hmm. so that there's 
sort of some new, you know, like a new topic every 10 minutes or a new, or you refresh their attention by talking about something else or showing a video or creating, you know, using some variety of uh, a different engagement tool like whiteboarding or, or some kind of prop. Um, yeah. you, you have to keep that that attention up because otherwise it will the natural way that attention goes is it starts high and it just begins to drop and it mm -hmm. comes back up at the end. So we have to do things in between, you know, every I think on video every three to five minutes to re-engage people. And that Fair can point. be questions or any any kind of interaction or tools. Fair point. And would you want to share things which are not do's, not to do's? I mean, things that you've seen people doing and you would really not recommend them to do and you know, prevent <laughs> sure. them doing. Yeah. Um, yes, yes. Uh, one I hear a lot is, I don't have my camera on because my customer doesn't have their camera on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You hear that? Yeah. And that is really an excuse. That's an hmm. excuse um, because it's not a good reason. Yeah, true. Because the customer still gets all the benefit of you being on, on video, seeing your face, seeing how you feel about things and connecting with you, your eye contact. Yeah. Um, the only thing is it's not as comfortable for you, but you have to get over that discomfort because, mm -hmm. um, you know, if, you got to put your, com your customer first. So it really doesn't matter whether they have theirs on or not. You should always have your camera on. If, if that relationship matters and relationships are part of sales and mm -hmm. you should have that camera on. Makes yeah, sense. Absolutely. absolutely. Makes sense. Um, the other thing I see people doing is uh, when they've got a, a group that they're talking to is they'll often, um, you know, be looking around trying to read everybody's body language all at once. And, and so that, that really looks to other people like you're distracted or, um, so that, that shifty eyes is associated with a guilty conscience or being up to up to something no good. Yeah. And the fact is that on video, you have to understand how to read body language and it's different than in person. Mm -hmm. And you have to understand too, that most people show up very differently on video. And so what you're, what you're trying to read from someone's body language um, may not be accurate. It may not mean the same thing that it does in person. For instance, I talked about, you know, people showing up with a very blank face on video. And that's because we've been trained this way by media to sit in front of a screen and, and consume information. Right. And so it doesn't, it's just our, our natural, it's, it's however people's physiology, their face settles into in front of video. And so that if we miss, if we interpret that as somebody's bored and we panic, and then we start doing a lot of you know, unnecessary things like speeding up or cutting things out or checking in every two seconds. We just create the self-fulfilling prophecy. So, um, so understanding the body language of our customer on video and how to read it and, uh, and interpret it is, is really an important part of this, uh, selling on video process. Very interesting. I think these were great points, uh, Julie, uh, I'd love to sort of, uh, you know, go to the last part of the podcast that we generally ask to everyone is that what would be your reading recommendations or learning recommendations i would say in this case for audience that want to get better at video setting i think you can obviously talk about your master class would love to hear more about that and then you sure. know if there are thing apart from that sure well thank you um yes yeah, so certainly the the master class is a series of, of videos that you go through on your own and learn the techniques they're modeled i give you a ways to practice it, record yourself, evaluate yourself, all those tools. So that's a, a very good practice program. But I would have to say, as far as books, uh, my recent book, Look mm -hmm. Me in the Eye, Using Video to Build Relationships with Customers, Partners, and Teams, is mm -hmm. really a how-to manual on everything we talked about. So it's how, how do I make eye contact? How do I Read body language. How do I use my body? How do I connect with customers who are very, very much um, more passive virtually than they are in person? Uh, and the the book really came out of the master class because 
in part of the master class, um, I often coach people afterwards individually or in small groups. And they would have questions like, well, gosh, what if, you know, people are so passive on video, how do I get them engaged? And how do I, what if I have multiple screens and how do I look at the different screens? And so yeah. I really tried to answer a lot of those, those questions. So, so that's, there really isn't another book out there that, that addresses those particular level of questions about connecting on camera. So that's selfishly, but, but also altruistically, if you want help in that area, that's, that will get you there. Look me in the eye. Makes sense. And I think that that should be really valuable. I, I'm going to check the masterclass myself for sure. Uh, but that brings me to the end of the podcast, Julia. This was such an insightful session and I learned a lot. I'm sure the audience would really love this session. Well, thank you. Well, I hope they um, check out, you can check out my website for more videos and articles on selling on video and certainly get the book um, on Amazon and my master classes on my website as well. JulieHanson.live. Sure. sure. I would love the audiences to check for that. Uh, but thank you again for coming on Sales Gambit by Conway. Thank it's you. Really Thanks for having me.